there that helps purify the uh, location you're going to put the thermal compound and over here I ordered these these are copper shims for the uh, actual processors and thermal paste and um, we'll get into that more when we get down further into the guts of this machine now you can get this kind there's also one that's a silver compound uh, I've seemed to have better results with this gray one even though I hear that some people have the silver ones so what I'm going to do here is as you've seen I've taken this one apart before and it's usually under the warranty sticker what you're going to do is just yank out this bugger of a cork I mean it, yeah just grab some pliers don't do what I did and spend more than enough time pulling this out so once you get it out down there is a small security screw um, from the Torx set. I can't tell you what size it is, but if you pick up one of these tools, it'll be in there. Like I said, I picked it up at uh, the uh, O'Reilly's for like four or five bucks, and it's good to have it. Works on Xbox controllers and stuff like that. So you take that screw out, and you literally just slide this cover up and off. And I'm having technical difficulty again. <laughs> Let's pull it out again. There we go. All right. Eureka. We got the inside. Now, there's going to be several screws. Only one of them is a different size. And as you can see, there's one here, 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 over there over there and one more so just take your regular screwdriver and remove them some people put these in plastic cups um, I've done this to enough PlayStations that I feel fairly confident on how to remove these and put them back in so um, you know you do what's good for you some people number them like one two three four five and then they just put the bolts in you know their first step is number one and so on and so forth so they just go in reverse to take them back out um, and this screwdriver is uh, is actually magnetic which makes it a hell of a lot easier to pull these screws out because they're really long screws um, so we're just gonna finish pulling these bolts out excuse me screws and I will just to uh, get it out of the way um, this PlayStation has been repaired one time before um, it didn't take um, and that's where I was saying sometimes it takes you know one or two tries to fix these things sometimes you need copper shims sometimes you don't need copper shims but I didn't see enough videos actually showing how you put the copper shims on so hopefully um, this will be um, a little bit better help for that to clear up this uh, yellow line of death of what it's called okay Yeah, and then once we get that, what I suggest is you lift from the back and you pull off from the front. And basically, it's just like a little clip and it just pulls right off. Nothing big or special, but um, yeah, that's what it takes. And then what you can see here is to the right is the power supply and to the left is the uh, Blu-ray player itself. And the, uh, the Blu-ray player sits, um, it's not connected, it's just sitting free on there. There's a couple posts that you just have to move around. So um, the power supply usually gets a lot of dirt, especially on these fat systems. Um, the fat is my favorite, but here's the power supply right here, now on the left. And um, what you could do is you could just take a can of air and blow it out, or take a Q-tip and just try to clean up the vents. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pick this up and it should have a ribbon cable at the bottom that's going underneath the power supply. That's easy enough to take off. So we're just going to remove these screws off the power supply uh, and you will um, be able to get to that ribbon. Now one thing I will say that there are indicating lines on the actual um, components themselves, the parts that actually show like arrows or arrows with M's with it 
if you look at the screws when you're removing some of these screws, some of them have plastic threads, which is a really coarse thread. Some of them will have a really fine, thin thread, and that's the M screw, which is the mechanical screw. And you just remove these, and you would what you're going to look for whenever you are inserting a screw is looking for these arrows to let you know, basically, like, now you put a screw in. It's pretty um, self-explanatory, and you'll see once you open up yours what it looks like. So this actually is sitting on a two-prong... Uh, assembly that's um, running from the power supply so you might need to just kind of slip your fingers under there and give it a little bit of a not too hard but a little bit of a yank just to get it off of those posts just because it likes to stick a little bit um, there are several screws and as you can see I did miss one of course and I believe it was a mechanical screw so once again if you have the cups then this would be your second stage of storing cups so once you're there you lift it off and there's your power supply. Disconnect it from the actual input and then you disconnect it from the motherboard and that's running the power to the motherboard. And right here in these holes is where you're going to clean off any debris, but you can see where the two posts go into the power supply and to power the rest of the board. Now, this is just a patch ribbon cable that you pull off from this location and I'll show you how to put that back on later but you basically insert it and clamp it down okay now these are gonna be where your heat sinks actually pull up on the um, and make contact with the processor and they're basically shims so they're not too bad and that is as you can see your hard drive and we're gonna remove that at this point so let's go ahead and slide that out real quick and this is just one screw um, I replaced my hard drive that came with it which I think was a 60 gig with a 320 gig hard drive so I've got tons and tons of movies it is just really really um, I, I like it I like it it's a very very interesting system all right easy comes out if you haven't seen one before, you probably have, but it's basically a uh, laptop hard drive um, with a um, with a um, SATA no, SATA drive, a SATA input. Okay, now this component right here is going to be the actual Bluetooth adapter, and. This is actually adapting it to, you know, so the controllers can sync up with it. Um, and this wire, this long black cord that goes from the top to the bottom, that is actually the actual receiver for the Bluetooth. And just, you know, it can plug off like an antenna. It's really simple to unplug, or I just remove it all as one, whatever is more convenient and you feel more comfortable with. And um, you need to get underneath this metal shielding, which of course is probably a heat shield as well. Um, to save you know, the components for our, the um, actual controllers and this is the controller drive underneath this part so just start tearing it down pulling it out piece by piece like I said this would be another step in the jar so you know if you had labeled egg crates or what or a carton or something like you would put these bolts in another one and it just lifts off and so does that and you can see that this is the board for the input for the controllers and this is just connected by a ribbon cable where you just flip the lever or the piece up or down on either side and um, basically it pulls the uh, ribbon cable out. And it's fairly simple to put back in. You don't have to force it. It's not a lot. It's just a contact for it. All right, and then you can see where the antenna is, and you can see where the USB cords would go in for the controller. You can, like I said, you can disconnect the antenna, but sometimes I just leave it alone because it's, you know, it's one less thing later on you need to figure out. So this one just is one screw, and the whole entire receiver comes out. Okay. Now we're going to start working on the actual getting to the motherboard itself. This isn't too hard. Um, you know, this would be, hence, another egg crate on there. Um, 
where you would start putting the screws if you wanted a, if you were labeling an A carton or something like that. And it's just basically like, um, it's not bad. I mean, not a bad idea, like I said, but uh, I just decided to do it without it. And more screws, god damn it. More, more screws there. Gotta get the screws out. God damn it. Now this is, I've fixed the PlayStation 3, obviously. I've tried to fix this one once before. I fixed an Xbox. Uh, 360, those are pretty easy. I fixed an NES, I fixed a PlayStation 2, I fixed Neo Geos. So, you know, once you crack one of them, as soon as you get into these lasers, you, you, you pretty much know what you're going, what you're going for. Um, you now you'll see a little bit later that little green disc is actually the battery for the um, CMOS setup and all that and that. You know, you be careful with that one. Like, it'll unplug straight from the motherboard, or it'll unplug from the actual battery itself. Um, but um, yeah, you gotta um, just make sure whichever way you pull it off that you remember. I believe the the tabs will be facing towards the top. But um, just double check yours before you just yank it off like I did because um, I've done it this once again many times. Not many times, but one time to this one, many times to others. And we're disconnecting the ground for the power supply. And we're gonna start taking off, I don't even know if the, you can call these shims, but they're basically, um, you know, they are bent in a concave or convex. Uh, don't even get into that one. Anyways, they're bent in a U shape, and they are to put apply pressure onto the heat sinks to contact with the processor, the GPU, and the CPU that much better. And that's usually that is what causes this yellow line of death on the PlayStation is um, just bad contact. This one was because of an overheating process, a problem, and that actually made the um, processors run hot, which made micro fractures in the thermal paste, which made the heat displacement a lot worse or non-existent. It would turn on, beep once, twice, and then shut back off. Okay. Kudos. All right, now, there's your heat shield. Blah, don't need it. Right now, I don't need it. Anyways, you can kind of see where we're going. The You can see the underbody of the one of the processors. I can't tell you if it is the GPU or the CPU. They all look alike to me. And this is where I do the valiant fight to pull out the motherboard. My God. And there we go. The thermal paste finally gives up with a valiant effort. And I'm just going to put that down over here. And you can see down where it's kind of, I might have put it in a little bit thick, but I definitely think that it was just that it didn't have a good contact with this. It definitely. Um, it looks like the processor might have sunk uh, during the original heat um, during the uh, original fix. And we're going to get down to, you can see where the circular fan is. Um, these actually are really nice fans. I mean, this thing, this fan has been running since this is, I think I got it after the first six months the PlayStation came out. Um, but they stay fairly clean. Usually it's not a fan issue. So I've seen some people go and you know, overclock the fan and make it spin quicker to blow the dust out. And that's not gonna really, 
I wouldn't say that that's I've never noticed that that would fix this you know usually it's a overheat issue um, especially where I'm at the dust that we have is really um, really thick and uh, almost gooey I guess is what you say anyways once again take these bolts and put them in their own little cubby and you know the fan comes off just simply and here's heatsink one and heatsink two and what happened is by me trying to actually pull the motherboard out and the heat seek sticking is these actual flanges have gotten kind of bent up. So what I do is I just take a flathead screwdriver and I kind of just make the spacing a little bit so air can flow through there correctly. Um, you know, good airflow between there is really important. Like you might as well undo everything that you did if you, you know, mess up during something, especially with these heat sinks. You can get replacement heat sinks, but most of the time you just kind of bend it back and make sure that you have a good airflow. Nothing's contacting. You know, these these there's these little T contacts that run down the side, and you just make sure that they're closed. But you know, do not pry. Um, too much on them. I mean, it's soft metal. I believe it's just, you know, um, you know, you could see that one got really bent, and I think that was the one that was holding on there. So I'm just going to bend it up a little bit with my screwdriver edge and, like, just try to straighten it out. You know, nothing nothing too bad, but just make sure that they're not contacting, like, you could see the that row at the very end. Looking better, looking better. And we're gonna have to clean those up, of course, but um, let's just finish that. All right, so here is the remover, and I've heard you can use um, rubbing alcohol. I, I, you know, I tend not to really, you know, skimp, skimp on this stuff. I mean, this stuff is fairly cheap. You get it at Radio Shack. I think I paid like $11, $12 for it. I mean, just go and spend the good stuff, the 11 and $12 and save you you're having, um, having a hard time removing this because this stuff is pretty, pretty coated on there. And usually what you want to do is you want to use like a lint-free cloth, like a cloth that's not going to have a lot of, you know, you don't want to use paper towels because you don't want to get that all over your actual um, processor. You don't want to have, make more work for yourself, you know what I mean? Um, and as you can see, it takes a lot of rubbing to get this shit off. I mean... And you rub some more, and some more, and a little more. All right, now we're gonna get straight to the motherboard. We're gonna pull off that heat shield and that just comes off by itself. Now, we're gonna do two different things. We're gonna clean the processor off and we're going to jimmy a reflow on this board. So I put a drop of both of the uh, cleaner on both of these processors and we're just going to kind of rub it around so it can start breaking down that uh, putty that's uh, in between the processor and the heat sink. And this is usually the culprit um, of the yellow line of death, you know, and you really want to get these really nice and clean, you know, um, have a couple shop towels, you know, or flip them around, whatever you need to do, get that putty off there, get that surface real nice and clean real it has a real fine like matte finish when it finishes when you finish polishing this stuff off and then we're going to use the uh, uh, resurfacing uh, liquid on there as well and some more see i wanted you to feel the pain of what it actually takes to finish one uh i want to clean one of these but i mean hindsight and all like uh I'd rather do this than buy a new PlayStation, you know. Now, these are what the heat 
shields are gonna usually go on. Um, so here I'm gonna say, what we're gonna do is you wanna make sure you lay the board almost completely flat. You don't want it tilted in any way, shape, or form. Uh, this usually works for me. And then what you're gonna do is 30 seconds on one side, flip it over 30 seconds on each, then 30 seconds on the GPU and CPU. Then you're gonna let it sit for 30 minutes after all of this is done. Now this is just a uh, industrial size um, heat gun. I mean, you pick these up at like Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, Radio Shack 2, I mean, they cost um, uh, $29, $35, bucks, something like that. And basically what it does is you're reheating all the micro solder welds real quick. Uh, not even real quick, but like uh, just to get any cracks that might have happened during an overheat of the board. So those little cracks will not arc uh, any signal and will not degrade any signal. And there are a couple of the uh, buses that have like a little, little foam covering and you can just take those off and then replace them. So we're going to do 30 seconds and we're going to flip it. And we're going to do 30 seconds again. And this side of the board, you, it's automatically flat. You don't need to worry about it too, too much. Um, the other thing that you could think about is just make sure, you know, um, don't touch the contacts too much. Uh, for any damage on the cupper area of the board. Um, if you see any like water damage, you can use some rubbing alcohol and then polish up the contacts with a uh, pink eraser, like the original Plain Jane pink eraser works best. And um, we're gonna finish up this one here and we're gonna flip back and then you're doing it in a circular motion. I should have pointed that out, but if you notice, I'm not just waving it back and forth, but I'm going in a circular motion, not in, you know, I'm going clockwise, not only with my, the way that I'm heating it, but also with the heat gun. So you'll see I'll be doing small circles around the processor about half an inch above the board. Um, to the other one and then like I said small circles just keep it moving don't stay in one place you know just leave it like that keep going for the total 30 seconds usually just have your phone set for 30 seconds beep and then restart it 30 seconds next one beep and then you do the two processors both of those beep beep and then you go ahead and then you set your timer for about 30 minutes cleaning up the last bit of the processor and getting it ready for the new thermal paste. And um, so let me explain these copper shims. Um, got these copper shims, weren't too expensive. Basically, I'm gonna size them up. Usually it's the same size, but just to see how they sit. And basically what this is, is if your PlayStation heated up to a point where one of the processors has dipped um, one way or another too low and it's not making a very good contact with the processor or the heat sink that these are supposed to build it up so it gets a better contact and the heat displacement can um, work a lot um, better for your system I should say all right so let's get this show on the road I would like to get the show on the road but I like to take my time too. All right, so this is basically, I'm just, you know, you don't want to touch the surface too, too much. You don't need to necessarily clean these too well, but I just, you know, definitely do not touch the GPU, the CPU, do not touch the copper, you know, or the heat sinks because the oil in your fingers will affect it. Now, when you're putting on the thermal paste, you're just making a nice little line and then you're gonna draw it out with the card and you wanna press it real fine. Like you don't want it thick because you're just gonna find yourself having the exact same issue. So very little thermal paste will go a long way and you can add a little dot or two as it's going if you see a bare spot. 
But for the most part, this should be really thin. Just an, you shouldn't see any metal, metal from the GPU or the CPU, any of the chips. But you just just continue to work it and work it and push it down until you actually have a real fine layer. And I'm just gonna, like I guess I'm gonna put a little drop right here just to finish this up. And then continue down and you can you know there is no wrong way of really applying it like up or down or left and right but just as long as you get the whole entire chip covered that's what you need to do um, nice steady s strokes and not stopping midway you know just keep on pulling it and pulling it and pulling it until you get a nice coat And I feel like a bricklayer. More concrete over here. Concrete. Yeah, see. And it's getting to be a little bit better, a little bit cleaner. Then we're going to go ahead and put one of the shims on there. Like I said, the shims, only thing that you need to make sure is when you're putting the shims on that you are, it, you don't want it to contact the heat shield that goes over them. I mean, we'll do the same with this. And then because you have to do not only the processor, but you have to do the shim as well. Usually I almost go through a whole entire tube of this stuff, and this stuff isn't too bad. The silver is more expensive, but you know, you just, you know, just, you don't need to go cheap. And pressing, press. Press. And a little to the left, and a little to the right. Alright, let's put the other shim. And this shim actually was a little bit bigger than the processor, but um, I never noticed that being a problem so far. So now that they're nice and stuck, what we're going to do, this might not be the easiest for you. Maybe you could do them on the table and then apply them. Um, I just didn't want to have to get my fingers involved too much into trying to pull these up and, you know, um, but either way, you're going to get a little dirty trying to hold this heat sh uh, shim down. And I'm basically, you know, don't you don't want to uh, exert a lot of pressure on the board, but these boards are pretty resilient. You know, it doesn't take much to, you know, get this paste on there. It's just um, working it at, as, uh, at an awkward angle. And here I'm just grabbing it from the sides, not on the tip or anything like that. But um, the copper seems to take a little bit more of this thermal paste just because of how uh, porous it seemed to be. And we are almost there. Now I kept on flick, clicking some of this stuff on the actual board itself. My bad. You can clean that up with some rubbing alcohol. Um, you know, not a paper towel, just your regular your other towel. You, you know, um, it's non-conductive, which is the nice thing. So it, you know, 
course that means electricity doesn't pass through it just heat so if you do get it on the board it's not necessarily a bad thing but just try to clean it up and now the second shim you know and because it's basically being sandwiched on this um, putty it's usually um, it doesn't move too too much when you're doing this as you can see I'm trying to hold the shim in place with the finger without touching it and hmm. more putty lots of putty see like I said you'd probably go through a because you're basically trying to do the work of two like if you were doing like four processes at this point so the fact that it lasts this long is pretty good We're getting there to being finished here. And there is, of course, a hair. Damn it, there was a hair. Now you can see this is why I say don't use paper towels or anything like that because it would just leave flug all over the place and just ruin everything that you're trying to do. And I'm gonna try to clean up a little bit of that paste on the end there. I have to clean it up after my hair incident you can see I'm trying to show you that it's not really that thick and the shine kind of makes it difficult for you to see what's covered up but it's really not thick at all um, and of course I have to be a perfectionist because once you put this thing back together you really just don't want to have to do it again So just make sure your heat sinks are nice and clean. And I also use the um, the uh, cover purif uh, the surface purifier for the heat sink as well. So here we go. And what you want to do is try to make sure that the edges for the heat sink do not touch the heat shield itself. Um, it, it, I've never noticed it. Like I said, it's non-conductive, but like we're not going to chance anything. So you can like take a butter knife and just kind of straighten it out. Now, this is what I was talking there. You can see how I just bent them so they would be able to pull up a little bit more pressure. And usually you want to do it like not screw it all the way down. You want to ease it in so you get equal pressure. So get it started and thread it on one side and then start on the next side. So I'll get this one started to just grip enough and go in a little bit. And then what I'll do is I'll go and force the other one down. And that'll start gripping the heat shield. And then I won't tighten it all the way down. I'll just leave it tight enough. You know, I'm going to go back to the other one and I'll tighten that one down and I'll keep on doing this. I'll be taking turns so it raises, it gives it a, a more of an equal pressure instead of me pushing all of the uh, thermal paste to one side of the processor. Since, like I said, I suspect that the processors must have sank when it was overheated by... 
my lovely son, the Havenator. Now, I just wanted to uh, show you that it was how to tighten down the processors. The step to put the PlayStation back together is, of course, the same as reversed. And if you put the uh, bolts or the screws back into uh, like a cartons or a uh, yeah, an a crate, and like you just basically take the bolts and do everything in reverse. I just wanted to show you the system is up and running. And I'm not going to lie to you, I actually tried to turn the system on and I forgot to turn the camera on, but I assure you it came up, it asked me for the date and the time I had to start that all up um, for this system. Um, so I didn't have a chance to show you that, but uh, I just wanted to load up this game, uh, have it play for a couple seconds and let you see that it's not going to automatically shut down. This thing, this PlayStation wouldn't turn on at all before and now it's starting to work I'm loading a not a big game but you know loading a game that would put a little bit of a stress on there you know um, pretty large world stuff like that you can see um, and we're just gonna have it start playing for a few minutes but um, you know I hope you enjoyed this I hope it helped uh, you know um, if it doesn't keep the first time um, you don't need a reflow every time you open the board, but I do sometimes. Sometimes I'll reflow every other time, but, um, you know, like I said, I've only had this not work but this second time, and I am pretty sure that um, it was because of the processors sinking inside. Um, and to date, this was, uh, it takes me a little bit to put these videos together, um, a day or two to actually, like, clip it and then actually record the audio so um, my son's been actually playing this PlayStation 3 on this exact same game or any other game he wanted to but he's been playing with the PlayStation at least uh, I'd say about four hours a day for the last three days um, still running nice and cool haven't had any problems no glitches no fuses no nothing um, anyways but uh I'll just leave you with the just cause and a little bit of my antics and uh, thumbs up, man. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it good. I mean, once again, um, don't shoot me. I can be saved. Catch you guys later.